five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Well, let's go check in with a special guest. All right, it's that time when we uh, check in uh, with an old friend and we have to call him because he always starts off with something kind of interesting. Uh, well, well, listen, we'll see here. There we go. Okay. Come on. Hmm. There we go. It's going to start ringing. Well, finally. Listen. Listen. You've reached the David Duke hotline. If you hate Jews, press 1. If you hate blacks, press 2. If you hate Mexicans, press 3. If you hate Puerto Ricans, press 4. If you hate Asians, press 5. And if you think Indonesians are training elephants to attack you at night, slam the phone over your head and scream like a chicken. <laughs> Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the wonderful, the attractive, the... Um Thank you, thank you. I just had my surgical dimples put in. I look beautiful. Uh, Somebody put it on my forehead. He, he now lives in the wonderful city of Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas, so it's going to be 107 today. Look well, out, the only way five. the only way you can win in that town is when you get off the plane, walk into the propeller. Thank you That's very much. Right. It's so hot here. Guys are paying hookers to blow on their hands. But I got to tell you, how hot is it? It's so hot. <laughs> I can't think of one right now. It's, it's so dark. Let's pretend we had a blackout. It's so dark, the speak walkers are wearing curb feelers. Didn't I, didn't I used to do a bit where I would ask people, uh, just I would throw out, like, my wife's so fat. <laughs> and then My you, wife is so fat. When, <laughs> when, by the way, I, just, I don't know, Governor Christie, he, he, he said, when did you get food during the I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, know. no, when she well, I remember uh, when she sits around well, the house, she sits around the house. She sits around the house, ladies and gentlemen. My wife's my he, wife is so fat when they cremate her, it'll take six guys to carry the urn. Hello? My wife's so fat that uh, when she stands on a mailbox in a red, white, and blue dress, people try to stuff mail in her mouth. Are you kidding? My wife is so fat when she dances, the band skips. <laughs> <laughs> Now they're coming to me. It takes a little, takes a little longer to get a Well, here, here was my ultimate. This is my, my joke killer, okay? My wife is so fat. Now you're supposed to say, how fat is she? How fat is she? <laughs> She's so fat that her doctor said if she doesn't lose weight, she may die. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well that, that's the best one I've heard so far. <laughs> my wife's so fat, she is dead. <laughs> 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 oh Lord! Oh, what have we sunk to? Mm. Look at us! Look at us! Fat jokes! Fat jokes! I know fat jokes. Of course, he had more chins than a Chinese phone book. But I got to tell you. But but do you remember when fat jokes were in fact? Uh, oh sure. Okay. It was okay to drive home yeah. drunk, and the cops would say, "Ah, he's just drunk again." And you can't even do wife jokes anymore. Yeah, no, you can't. Lady driver jokes. I think they're making a comeback. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, the Jack Carter big book of a thousand and one lady driver jokes. So an introduction by Roy Cohn. It's well, no, lady item. driver jokes are, are permissible now in uh, Saudi Arabia. Oh, yeah, that they have. <laughs> she said she just turned 30. I said it must have been a U turn. Ah, thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. You say, well, anyway, th those are the, uh, those are the, yes. uh, the golden jokes <laughs> of our past. These are the wonderful jokes that kept me out of the big time in the 1980s, folks. Hope you enjoy them as much as I enjoy telling them to you. Do, do, did you, do you ever tell literally jokes? Because I can't, 
I may have a joke that I, somebody told me and then I can repeat it, and then after a while I forget it. I mean, if you ask me right now, tell me a joke. Uh-huh. I couldn't tell you a joke. I know. You can think of a million of them when nobody asks you. When somebody asks, like looking for a cop. When you're looking for a cop, you can't find one. So no, but I never think in terms of jokes. I think in terms of lines, and I think you're the same way. I mean, I don't think you're, you don't say, uh, you know, who, who, what comedian used to tell jokes? Uh, uh who was Bob that? Bob tell jokes. No, that, that uh, Jewish comedian. Not Shecky Green, but the Jewish comedian that uh, he used to always tell stories because he started out in the business by being a salesman. and he would Oh, have, Myron Cohen. He was Myron great. Cohen. Yeah, and he would have to tell stories to people. Uh-huh. And so that's what his whole act was, was telling stories. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, a guy comes to Lake every day for 20 years, 9 o'clock sharp. He's never a bit of late, 9 o'clock, 20 years. One day after 20 years, he shows up at 10 o'clock. He's all beat up. He's on crutches. He's in a cast. He's got bandages on him. His nose is broken. His eyes are black. The boss goes, you're an hour late. He goes, an hour late. I went to take the elevator in my building, and the elevator wasn't there. I fell down 17 stories. I may. And the boss goes, that took an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a Myron? My is that a Myron That's Cone a, story? That is a Myron Cone joke. I, maybe he took it from someone else in 1940. I don't know, but I heard him tell it, and I loved it. Wow, wow. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, he told good stories. That's a good one. That's a good. That one. is a good one. Yeah. What took you so long? <laughs> well, he's dead. Then I can use it. What the hell? Who's going to complain? Yeah, but he he started out by telling literal. Stories and and yeah, I think he's a fabric salesman or something, and he shows samples and he tells stories and win them over. I'll, I'll tell you though, the, the the best joke mode that I remember, I learned from uh, Pendulette, and mm-hmm. that's the very involved storytelling joke. Uh-huh. Uh huh. A good example would be the aristocrats joke. Yeah, sure. you know, which everybody <laughs> knows because of the Aristocrats movie. Yeah, but you could take that joke, drag it out. I mean, a pen would tell a joke. There was a joke we called the bear joke, uh-huh. and he would take ten minutes to tell the bear joke. Uh-huh. He would embellish on it. Uh, do you know the bear joke? I have no idea what the bear joke uh, is. I'm going to do the shortened version of the bear That's- joke. The AM version of the Reader's Digest version of the, 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 the bear Reader's joke. Digest version of the bear joke because I because he turned it into a drama, you know, <laughs> into an acting tour de force. But this guy is out hunting in the woods and he's got his shotgun with him, and all of a sudden, out in the opening is a bear. So he pulls the gun up to his eye and he aims and he fires. And he misses. And the bear comes charging over to him, (coughs) grabs the gun, throws it to the ground, and says, why did you do that? And he said, well, because I'm out bear hunting. He said, I'm a bear. I like my life here in the woods. I like the life that I lead. He said, you know what? I'm going to let you go, but first of all, I'm going to teach you a lesson. And he immediately turns the guy around, pulls down his pants, and starts fucking him in the ass with his big, (laughs) greasy bear dick. Okay? Mm -hmm. And and he he pounds him like a a motherfucker. I mean, he's just going at him. And when he's through, (laughs) the guy is even bleeding a little bit from his ass. That's how bad it was. And the bear says, never do that again. At which point the bear turns around and starts walking away, and the guy sees the shotgun lying on the ground, and he says, I can't miss a second time. Yeah. So the bear, he pick, picks up the, uh, the, the shotgun, puts it up to his eye, aims it at the bear. Boom! He shoots the shotgun. The bear, he misses. <laughs> the bear turns around, walks over to him, and says, grabs the shotgun, throws it on the ground, says, you know something? You really didn't learn your lesson, so I'm really going to have to teach it to you now. 
Turn around and bend over. <laughs> and the guy reluctantly turns around, bends over, and now the bear gives him the big greasy bear dick one more time. But I mean, Yikes. this time it is brutal. And now blood is gushing from the guy's ass. That's how brutal this fucking was. And then he stops, and the bear says, Now let that be a lesson to you. And the guy goes, well, Okay. You know, and he's lying on the ground. His ass is bleeding. He's in dire pain. The bear turns <laughs> around, walks away. The guy sees the shotgun on the ground. He says, I can't miss a third time. I mean, that would be impossible if I missed a third time. So he grabs the shotgun. He, he does everything he can to get himself up on his feet. He takes the shotgun. He points it at the bear. Boom! He misses the bear. The bear turns around, walks over, grabs the guy, looks him straight in the face and says, you know, somehow I don't think you came here to hunt. <laughs> Yeah, I wish to God that was the Ted Nugent story. Now, that is that is the short version, okay? <laughs> when Penn tells it, it's an opus, okay? Yeah, like, imagine all the detail he put into it. Yeah. Exactly. That was the short version. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. and, and the Aristocrats was another one of those jokes that you could uh, either tell very quickly. Oh, yeah. Or you can go on forever, or you can go on any, there's no time limit on it. And they made the movie out of it because what they did is they got all these comedians who had heard the uh, aristocrats joke, which you've heard uh -huh. and I've heard and everybody's heard, uh, and was running around show business for years and years and years. And um, uh, everybody in that picture to, told their own version of the story. And uh, yeah. Some of them uh -huh. were long and some of them were short, but mm -hmm. they all had a different spin. And the great thing about that joke was you could put yourself into it. You could put the spin into it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, exactly. Your, your version here. But I, I like Chuck McCann's joke in the movie, which was my favorite because instead of the aristocrats, he said, we're called the sophisticates. I thought that was a better punchline. Well, that, that was the alternate on it. You know, yeah. The original time I, when I first heard it, I believe I heard it as the sophisticates. Uh, In case people don't know the joke, that way, you know, the, this guy goes into an agent and and he says, "I we got the," I, uh, and he's got his whole family with him. He says, "I got the world's greatest act." And he says, "Well, what's the act?" And the guy says, "Well, first I come out, and then my mother comes out, and I fuck her, okay, <laughs> and then then my brother comes out and he blows me." And then, then the, the, my sister comes out, spreads her legs, and we all take turns fucking her. And then we fuck my mother. Okay? And this goes on and on and on. I, yeah. I, don't, I, won't, I could, you know, embellish a joke. Then my and uncle I, sits on the stage, and we all eat it, and we yeah. rub it on each other. And <laughs> yeah. And each other. You know, and we fuck each other, and I lick my yeah. grandfather's shitty asshole. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And, <laughs> and, and, then, and then he says, my God, that's the most amazing act in the world. What do you call yourselves? He says, we call ourselves the sophisticates. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> or the aristocrats, you know, whatever yeah. you want. Whichever. Yeah, yeah, everyone has their favorite. I like the sophisticates. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, so that's another story that, uh, that people, uh, uh, you know, tell. Uh, and and they embellish upon, and they they embellish upon it, on and on and on and on. So. Yeah, it goes on forever, and until you want it to stop. Do you remember the first joke you ever learned? Because I do. I remember the first joke I ever told, and it uh, I think it won five dollars on the Herb Sheldon show because my mother sent it in. Who's the Herb Sheldon show? Herb Sheldon was a guy who was, he had a kiddie show on for a little while in the fifties or something, the late fifties, and yeah. I think he died in nineteen sixty four. He had a bad ticker, but he was one of those guys you see on TV. He was a pitcherman, then you see him on a kiddie show, then you see him on this or that. So sure. he came and went. But so, uh, he had a show, he'd come out in a straw hat and it came like some little vault billion and kids would send in jokes and the best one would win five dollars. So and I told him and that was it. So I and I won. So I wrote my first joke when I was about four, actually. What was it? Can you remember? It was horrendous. It was for a four-year-old kid, it was pretty good. It was the uh, Halloween was coming. I guess it was 1959 or something. And my mother said, "Do you want to go out in a costume for Halloween?" And I said, "Yeah, I want to be a witch." 
And my mom said, you want to be a man witch or a lady witch? So I said, I want to be a sandwich. And she thought it was all funny, and she sent it into Herb Sheldon, and I remember him reading it on the air, and it won the $5 prize, which I never got because they put it in for my fucking college fund. That's not a bad joke. For a four-year-old in the Eisenhower area, yeah. But, but, you, know, you, say, you see, I never wrote jokes, but my father, my father liked to, I was kind of a party favor. Uh, and my father would teach me jokes to tell company, uh, uh-huh. but they were never nice jokes. Okay, uh, naughty jokes. Have a little kid tell a naughty. So joke here's the kid. first joke he ever taught me, and I knew how to s- tell the story. And then when I would tell it, everybody would laugh, but I didn't get why they didn't were. Get it. <laughs> I didn't get why they were laughing, but uh-huh. I would I would tell the story on cue, and my father would say, "Good, tell him the joke, kid." And the joke was this, a uh, princess is walking through the forest when she happens upon a frog. And the frog says to her, hi, princess, listen, uh, if you take me and you put me under your pillow tonight, I will turn into a handsome prince in the morning. And she says, really? Really? He says, yeah, really, I'm, I'm an enchanted prince, but they made me into a frog, but if someone will put me under their pillow overnight, I will be a handsome prince. So she figures, what the hell? So she takes the, uh, she takes the prince home, or the frog home, puts it, the frog under her pillow. Sure enough, next morning she wakes up, and there's a l- really handsome prince <laughs> lying next to her. And do you know to this day her father doesn't believe the story? <laughs> now that That's was a good one. that and was you had the, no idea what you were saying. That was the first joke I ever learned. Ah, an oldie but a goodie. And I had no idea what it meant. Ah, and everyone's laughing, and you go, "Well, I must have done good, even though I don't know what I did." Yeah, they would be laughing their heads off because this little kid was telling this story. Ah, and I think he had a few more jokes he taught me, but. You know, that I would say in private company. That's, yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. I so, was writing early. I had a letter published in Mad Magazine in 1971, in fact. So did you I really? I was always at it, one form or another. Did you really? Yep. I wrote it in the summer of 1970, and it came out, I think, in the January 71 issue with Alfred E. Newman as George Patton on the cover. Yeah, and and and, and what was and the what was, was in, I guess Stephen Paul, if you live Long Island. Whoa, look at that! And everybody was a star in Long Island for like a couple months. <laughs> I mean, what was it about? Well, there was a, they had a little article called The Mad Love Book. Like, don't you love finding change in a jacket? And don't you love, you know, this and that? And, and uh, I read it the, the, the masthead of the magazine. It said, Mad is published every month of the year, except February, May, or Mar- February, March, May, and November. So I wrote, don't you just love February, May, March, and November? Because those are the months Mad isn't published. And I knew then it was going to be published. And they published it sure enough. Wow. So, and I have a picture of it I can send you if you want. If so anyone you, doesn't believe me, uh, uh, Nina found me that Mad Magazine for my birthday a few years ago, and I took a picture of the letter and I put it on Facebook. Wow. <clears throat> and I was 14 when I wrote it. Well, that, you see, I mean, now, so you were really writing jokes before you were telling them. Yeah, exactly. I, I had no idea I was ever going to be a comedian. I loved comedy. I loved comedians back then. But, uh, you know, I was, I was into it not knowing it back then. So. so how did you discover you were a comedian? I mean, at what point did you suddenly say? I, well, I was a kid. I always loved cartoons and humor and uh, watching the Three Stooges and Laurel and Hardy. I always, through my whole life, I loved music and humor. Music and humor. That got me through. So I'm a horrible musician, and I figured, well, I could tell jokes pretty well. So I became a comedian, but... Before that, I just I was always music and humor in my life, so I figured I would like go down the path of one or the other, if not both, you know. So how so, did how did you, how I, did I you how did you start as a comedian? Was there an open mic and you decided you would try it? Before I graduated the School of Visual Arts in May of '77, that's when Elvis was alive and Son of Sam was on the loose. They had a talent show and I they, I signed up for it and I said I probably got to just put a little five minute act together. Of, uh, I made little props, and it was on like local commercials and shit. And I did it, and the room was full, and it was a Friday night, and I totally kicked ass. I was getting applause breaks for everything. And, whoa, this is cool. I'm going to do this all the time. So I go, I'm going to be a star in no time. 
And then I started hitting clubs in New York, and of course it was like hit or miss. I'd either kill or I'd bomb real bad. So, but I knew I, if I didn't kill the first time, I never would have done it again because I'm a quitter. I'm a wuss. But I killed the first time. I knew I could do it again, so I kept going up. And before I know it, I was, before I knew it, I was in too deep to get out. So here I am today. Yeah, yeah. Once you get up like once, you've got something. It's twice. Exactly. Get it. Twice you've 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 created some more material. Before you yeah. know it, you've got an act. There you go. And uh, yeah. I, I remember rehearsing, the, I went on a comic strip for, like a week after I did the School of Visual Arts thing. I, I really bombed. I ended up going out at 3 in the morning, which might have something to do with it. But uh, I went, well, this actor's going to kill. And I put down together what I thought was five minutes, and I read it out loud. It turned out to be like 17, and I had to really trim it down because you only allow like three minutes up there when you open mic in the 70s. So I did whatever, and they just stared at me. And I went home with my tail between my legs, but then I went to the improv the week after, and I killed. So, I, you know, not bad for, like, a 21-year-old kid who's just starting out. So I just said, well, I like this. I think I'm going to go this path. I don't know where it's going to lead, but uh, I'm enjoying it. Did so, you, the fir first time you did comedy, stand-up comedy, and you made people laugh, mm -hmm. uh, was that intoxicating? Incredible. It was better than coming. It was better than sex. It was, it was amazing. I never I had a feeling like that. Because yeah. I was always an attention whore. That's why I, I got into cartooning and comics. I wanted to make, you know, want to be a cartoonist and get my humor across that way. And uh, and then I just go, well, wow! Now I can get an immediate reaction with a room full of people, and maybe even get laid out of it a couple of times. So, yeah, I liked it better than drawing. So uh, I just stayed on that path. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and then it, I met you and said, "What's this going to be? What's this history, my friend?" But I mean, uh, you know, I um, the only time, you know, I was never a stand-up, as you know. Uh, uh, the idea of being a stand-up frightened the shit out of me. You know, yeah. I just never knew how you guys, because you know what it is, a, a comedy standing up on a stage is like instant rejection. Exactly. And I don't In take rejection. I don't take rejection well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, it was like instant. Re you know, it's instant rejection right there. And yeah, nobody I, takes it. I, I, I found it difficult to do, but the one time that I kind of started having an act was we, we were doing these things called, uh, um, co uh, not Comedy Tonight, but the other thing, uh, uh, One Night Stand, a HBO's One Night Stand. Oh, yeah. And, right. and besides being the announcer on those shows, I did the, uh, did the warm-up. Uh -huh. And, and it, when you come out and you warm up the audience, yeah. you're, you're teaching them how to applaud and laugh and you know, sure. do yeah, all those important. things. And you're also doing it so that you can get some applause tracks for the uh, for the uh, uh, production, so that if later on there's a problem and they need to cover it up, they can throw the applause in, whatever. So I go up uh, the first night and I do something, okay. And I get a couple of laughs, so I uh, had to do I had to do this twice a night for five nights straight. By the yep. end of the week, I had an act. There you go. By the end of the week, I knew what would work, what wouldn't work, and I was doing I was doing fifteen minutes up there. Wow! Before you know it, yeah. Now, there you go. now the reason to this day I hate fucking Bill Maher, <laughs> as everybody in Hollywood does, actually. Yeah. Uh, it, it because it, it, uh, he was doing one of these one night stands, and um, he uh, he calls me. He, he, they said Bill Maher wants to see you in his dressing room. Uh -huh. Where was Bill Maher? He, you know, he's one of the people doing these one night stands. We did two of them a night. Yeah. And um, I go into his into his dressing room, and he says. Um, you're doing the opening, you're doing the warm-up? I said, yeah. He said, uh, do you do any political jokes? And I said, well, I do a few things like, how many here hate Nixon or whatever? I can't remember who was president at the time. Yeah. And then they will all boo. And then I say, how many like so-and-so? And they will all applaud and so on. He said, don't do political. Yeah. I said, why? He said, I do political. Whoa. I said, look, I'm just a fucking radio announcer. Okay, who's been hired to do the warm up here? I don't. Ha this is not my special. I said I. I didn't. I all I'm getting. I'm getting. getting a, a, like I was getting like a hundred dollars a night or something like that to do it. I said, uh, you know, 
I said, I'm not competition for you in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but I do the political because it gets a response from the audience. And he says, well, just don't do it because I do political. I said, I understand you're making $20,000 for this gig. Oh. He said, yeah. I said, follow me. Ah. <laughs> and I walked out. I mean, hey, he's, the, he's, he's, I've known nicer people. <laughs> the temerity of this guy. I mean, to say to me, don't do, don't do political because I do political. Good. I'm He's glad you. Do. My God. I'm glad you do political, you little motherfucker. You know. Yeah. <laughs> now follow me. You're the professional. You're the one yeah. making the money. Little trick. Yeah. Little professional can follow anyone. You son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, listen. We've run out of time. Already, my God. Your blanket is over. Wh Jesus. While we're having fun like this, do it again this in a couple. Wacky party. Do, it, have a good time. do it again in a couple of weeks, right? You got it, my friend. Two weeks from today, whatever is good for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the fantastic Stephen Pearl. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. My wife is so fat that tune in for next week for the punchline. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that was Stephen Pearl and... Uh, uh, we thank him for having joined us this evening uh, for a little tete-a-tete, uh, -tete, as it were. Uh, it is now time for you to uh, call our fine program. Let me uh, give myself a little more volume here uh, so that I can, uh, uh, you, you know, I can hear what I'm saying. And uh, uh, the line, I will now open the lines. Here we go. Okay, the line's open. All right. So it's time now. What happens is, in case you're not used to this, uh, oh, look at my pants. You know, I wear these things every night. It's like I wear my pajamas to do the show. <laughs> they're not really pajamas. They're, they're lounging pants. I'm, I'm an old guy. Look at this. Look at this. I'm an old guy. That's what old farts wear. I wondered, you know, I wondered when, when in your life you would uh, come up with a uh, style choice that was like, you know, like, you know these guys that wear, like, uh, plaid pants? Well, pants like this. I mean, I would never wear these out, but they wear pants that are like this, okay? And they're plaid, and uh, uh, what morning do they wake up and suddenly say, this is a good style choice. I think I'll do this. Who knows? Anyway. Feeling a little better today. Uh, still a little lightheaded, but not like before. I took some vitamin D today. I think that may have uh, may have done it. Okay. Am I going out of frame here? I'll have to slouch. Oh, boy. Anyway, uh, our number, in case you don't know, go over to uh, gabnet.net. You won't miss the show. It's on there. Okay. Uh, and uh, there's a phone number if you want to call just using a phone. And if you want to call us on Skype, all the stuff you need to know about getting Skype and using Skype and, uh, and all that is right there, including a button you can push that will actually dial us here at the program. Okay? So that's, uh, that's your choice as well. Uh, but our, uh, if you already have Skype and you just want to know what our ID is, it's gabnet.net, and what we do is, it's not like you call the program like you do with some talk shows, and then you wait for an hour to talk to the host because he's already talking to other people, okay? So, um, I, uh, 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 you know, you, all you do is you just call me, and uh, we answer the, the phone, and then... When another person calls, we add them to the group, and then we add another one to the group, and eventually we have what we call a citizen panel. Uh, but as of late, it, we haven't had as many people calling us, uh, but I notice who, who's, is somebody trying to call? No, nobody's trying to call yet. But I do know that Charles Wallace is online, and there he is. I knew, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Hello, Charlie, how are you? Hello, Charlie, how are you? Hey, Alex. There we go. Let me see here. And he's already, we already have a slot for him, so we'll just see. There he is. He just comes right up. Yep, number yeah. two forever. 
<laughs> You'll be number two forever, right, right. And uh, then if, if Phil calls, I think he was in the number one slot, wasn't he, last yeah, night? Last night yeah. Yeah, well, here comes Josh Wheeler. So I have to put Josh in a, uh, in a, uh, uh, in a, in a thing here. Hold on a second. Uh, Josh, is Josh there? And here comes Phil. Let me see here. Let me get Josh. Uh, 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 hold on, Josh, while I find a place for you here. Uh, Josh uh, Wheeler, there we go. Okay. He's in th that spot. He's in the number There's three Phil. spot. There's Phil. Okay. We're off to a citizen panel here. Okay. Hello to all of you this evening. How are you? Hey, hey. What, oh, great. Oh, oh, yeah, you're wearing the old man's pants, too, right? <laughs> uh, absolutely. You know, I, I, I just want to know when these guys, you know how, how these guys wear the plaid pants down in Florida? Yeah, with the white patent leather belt. Yeah, uh, when do they, when do, what morning do you wake up and make that <laughs> style choice? You know? Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a generational thing. You know, uh, I you know people went from that to the Tony Soprano look, and uh, now you know I wonder. Uh, there's also the shorts, you know, with the long socks. You know, they they, they wear the white socks uh, up over the knee. Oh, over and, the uh, knee, or, really? Uh, well, not the knee, the calf. Over the calf. Well, almost uh, to the knee. Yeah, and then they, and they got those uh, shorts. You know, they're. Uh, uh, like Bermuda shorts, and what's wrong with Bermuda shorts? Well, there's nothing wrong with Bermuda shorts if you're in Bermuda. No, but, no, no. But I mean, what's wrong with Bermuda shorts, Phil? I I like Bermuda shorts, you know, they, but not with socks that go up over your calf that are white, <laughs> with the white patent leather belt, and uh, uh, you know, what do they use for a shirt? Uh, a brown shoes and a, and a white shirt. And and remember the brownie camera, brown shoes and blue and blue shirt. Uh, yeah, yeah, that doesn't work. No, no, no. Well, I wear tennis shoes all the time. I call yeah. them tennis shoes. Who plays tennis in them anymore? Yeah, yeah. And they're not really tennis shoes. They're they're like running shoes. They're running shoes. They're, they're Nikes. Yeah. I have Nikes. I don't yeah. know why I have Nikes. <laughs> You know, uh, are Nikes? Uh, uh, which ones are the politically incorrect ones? Is it Nikes or Adidas or? No, they're all politically correct. The Nike is considered a little politically incorrect because it's made by little Malaysian boys who are being paid mm -hmm. a penny an hour. But you know, do I yeah. give a shit? You know, the only thing I don't understand is if they're making them over in Malaysia, and they're getting kids to make them for for five cents an hour. How come mm -hmm. they charge one hundred and fifty dollars here? I mean, uh, what, it's, what? It's the tariffs. Is it the tariffs? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, wouldn't you think that they would say, "Hey, you know, we make these things so cheaply, we may as well pass it along to the consumer." But no. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. No, it's it's the tariffs, so uh, you know we can pay for all those social programs. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, it's you know. You know, like health care for the Malaysian boys. Health care for the Malaysian boys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, we should have health care for everybody. By the way, did you uh, did you see John Stewart yesterday in front of that committee? Yeah, yeah. I, I also saw the aftermath. Uh, I think there wasn't anybody in the room. Was he speaking to an empty if room? If you look, the whole bottom row of seats yeah. that should have been filled by congressmen wasn't yeah. filled. I mean, that, that, and he was reading him the riot act, saying, you know, these people had time for you. You should have time for them, you know? Yeah. And, and I thought it was a very good speech and didn't see any reason why he was doing it to advance himself, you know? No, it, he it, seemed it's, very genuine. Well, it's something that for the longest time he's had a passion about. And yeah. uh, uh, it was, you know, and what happened as a result, Today they passed it on to the uh, Congress uh, to pass it, you know. Yeah. So uh, uh, I guess they're uh, the the deal is underfunded. They had seven billion. They're down. They used five so far, but now. Well, no, it was of, coming up. It was coming up for renewal. Yeah. Okay. 
And they're going to renew it for another 50, uh, 70 years. Now, why 70 years? I have no idea. I think they feel that the family should get something yeah. Yeah. because of the loss of a loved one and so on. Oh, it, it's not for medical and, and other Oh, it's for uh, that, too. Yeah. It, it's yeah. for that, too. It's a general fund for the needs of the people who were the first responders at 9-11. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and he shamed them into it. He literally shamed them into it, and good for him. He, you know? he shamed now, them into it the first time. Hmm? You were living pretty close to the 9-11 site. Uh, to, to the World Trade Center yeah, when, yeah, when yeah, it went I was, down. I was, Did you smell I, the I, dust? And... It, oh, yeah, I was really close to it. I was, uh, let's see here, 3,000 miles away in San Francisco, Phil. Oh, you were? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, oh, boy, did I feel it. Uh, yeah. No, I'll, I'll, um, I'll never forget that morning, though. My uncle lived on uh, Houston Street uh, when, when it happened. I was working at, I was working at uh, CNET at that time. Oh. And I get a call from Shecky, yeah. who says, are you watching television right now? And I said... It was said, like at 5 in the morning, not time. Uh, well, no, no, it was about... When, 5 when I got the call. I got the call about 8 in the morning. So it had to be... I saw it happen. So it had uh, to be about 10 o'clock New York time. Okay. 10 New York time, but uh, uh, it was early. It was anyway, early. let's not... Thing, wasn't the first plane like at 8? Yeah, I, I yeah, can't remember when, but all I know is he my calls time. me up and he says, are you watching this? I said, what? He said, turn on your TV set. And I turned it on. And I said, is that the World Trade Center? And he said, yeah. I said, it's on fire. He said, no, it's not on fire. He said, that, that, uh, it, it's, uh, it's not on fire at all. He says, that is a case of, uh, of uh, uh, hold on a second, got to get Charlene in the mix here. Pa -pa 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 Oh, uh, there she is. Okay, all right, and transition. There we go. Uh, he says to me, he says, uh, no, a, a plane hit it. I said, a plane hit it? Now, you know, the last time a building in New York City was hit by a plane was years earlier. The Empire State Building, a uh, private mm -hmm. plane hit the yeah, Empire little, State little Building. Yeah, a little private plane. Uh, yeah. Were you glued to the TV at that point and then saw the next building get no, struck? No, and then as I'm talking to him, <laughs> yeah. the other plane hits, and I, yeah. and I say to him, oh, this isn't an accident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, this isn't an accident. And he went, no shit. Yes, Charlene. But I, I had to call in, like, well, because last night you were getting upset that you said nobody you know, wants to call. Mm -hmm. And then the second reason is when Phil... Once, like, got testimonials from people about 9 11. Because <laughs> I was in Queens. I was in New York, you know, but yeah. not Manhattan. Yeah. And well, that doesn't count. And not close. But uh, I just remember uh, waking up, you know, early in the morning and taking my son to school. And I dropped him off, came home, and uh, the phones didn't work. Like, that happened to everybody in New York because uh, all the phone stuff was on in, in the World Trade Center. You mean the like cell phones the, uh, or uh, the uh, the landlines? Any phones. Really? Like, they were all messed up and stuff. But uh, somehow my friend Nancy that lived in, um, uh, you know, she was, like, in Queens, too, uh, Bushwick, she lived. And she, she said to me, Charlene, go get your son. So I said, okay. So I, I walked over to go get my son. After I dropped him off, I had to go back to pick him up. And I just remember everyone saying, oh, my God, the Pentagon was hit. Yeah. And it was like it was like a like a movie, you know, one of those you know science fiction movies about like you know them blowing up the war, you know. The, so I went and got my son, and I just remember them saying that they, oh I don't know your son or something, you know. I was like oh my god, this is not a time to tell me like you don't know him that well, and you. Know, but she found my son, the woman, and she brought him down. I took him home, and you just said that about. I remember just watching it all on TV. <laughs> then the second one, you know, got hit. It was surreal. It was. It was surreal. And yeah. then I remember that that's all you did for like two weeks or something, maybe. I don't know. It was just watch 9-11. It was like there wasn't much television. At least for a week, there was no regular programming and stuff. It was all, I mean, at least for three days, that's all they talked mm -hmm. about was 9-11. Yeah. And the other thing I remember is going to the um, grocery store or something, walking, um, you know, Tony would know that area of Queens. 
<laughs> I'm walking to the grocery store, and there was a guy of like Middle Eastern background or something like, uh, like whatever those countries are, you know, in the Middle East. And he was kind of like smiling with this smile, <laughs> like he was like laughing or something. And it was like sick, like, you know. So then I, the other thing I remember too is that after it was all over, the smell that came over the Hudson, mm -hmm. there was this smell that, you know, I, I couldn't describe it. It was like, I guess the smell of, you know, the, the buildings came down and all that stuff, you know, you could smell it. New Yorkers then, have been getting that from New Jersey for years. Right. Well, not like a sea cloth <laughs> smell, but, you know, but then yeah. I also had to go downtown and I, I, I hope I, I probably inhaled a lot of dust and everything. Right. I mean, we, they weren't saying don't go down. Well, we couldn't get down. I, I remember seeing as close as I could get. I took a picture of it. It was like one of those movies again. Like I saw all the iron and all that stuff. I had to go down on the train, you know, and, and get out and go down and walk around down there. And I mean, I just like. You know that area down there, uh, you know, the uh, stock exchange area. It's very tight down there anyway. And I could just imagine, very squeezing together. And, you know, I, I could just imagine how frantic and, and what people must have been, you know, it must have been crazy down there that day. But, uh, you know, that that's my uh, recollection. I'll never forget all that stuff, you know, never. It was crazy. Yeah, well, I, uh, I remember... Um you know, I remember that incident with Shecky calling me, and uh, then I immediately ran down to CNET saying, you know, they probably need some kind of help, you know. I, so I went before I was supposed to start and uh, went down and helped with the coverage of it. Uh, but that was that was quite a, quite, you know, that was something, you know. Uh, yeah. And, and it, but it's strange, you know. I, I get the feeling in New York that people have forgotten it. You know, I really do get the feeling they've forgotten it. Well, Alex, you know, except really except that. when they want to yeah, like yell about you know Afghani's and things like that, but uh, or use it in an argument. But otherwise, uh, uh, it created a paranoia for us in this country. That's for damn sure that has lasted. But. You know, I, I don't, you know, the, they put up the buildings, they put, they put up the building again, it's all back, it's all not back the way it was. I mean, to begin with, we didn't build another building as ugly as those two buildings. I mean, they were pretty fucking ugly. Right, I agree. I remember. I worked in the uh, World Trade Center putting in carpet. Yeah, well, no, I mean, they used to, they used to refer to, they used to refer to those two buildings as the boxes the computers came in. And nobody ever liked those buildings. Oh, they right? hated it. They thought it was ugly, and it was. They yeah, were. It they was. had. They had no. The structures had no. Uh, nothing special about them. Well, yeah. it was the way that they were built. That the that uh, they had so much room on the inside, because of the way the uh, steel beams were on the outside. But that's what melted, and yeah. and brought the building down. But it's also what gave it uh, the tremendous amount of square footage on the inside that was unobstructed. We used to just uh, spray the glue down and roll the carpet out as qu as quickly as we could. Uh, and uh, there was there weren't any poles. They they didn't obstruct anything in the center uh, for you know structural support. And it was that was a very unusual design. Well, they say the structural support wasn't all that good. You know, there, there are a lot of reasons why that structure came tumbling down. It was built by low bid, and uh, and and uh, approved by mafia kickback. Uh, I, you you could be right about that. Oh, yeah. I'm very right about that. Yeah, That's it. yeah. I think the Javits Center was like that too, mafia kickback. You mean, oh, you mean by, by the way, Phil? Uh, do you mean to say it's not Obama's fault? <laughs> uh, oh, that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. What was he? Fifteen years old when they uh, when they hit that? Hmm. Uh, that? How old was Obama in uh, two thousand one? Uh, he's in his fifties. No, no, he was in his fifties when he got elected. No, he was uh, in he was in his forties when, when he got elected. Phil. Forties. So, uh, uh, and that was in two thousand eight. <clears throat> so, uh, oh. thought, okay, so he would have been in his thirties. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was his fault. <laughs> It was a conspiracy. 
Remember the new uh, that happened. But Alex, remember when you and Albert used to do those nine uh, eleven shows, and and you would say like I I used to love that because I was kind of sick of it after a while, after like you know four or five years of, mm-hmm. you know it was kind of getting um, you know tiresome that you know we kept remembering and you know you were very irreverent about all that but I used to think it was funny. <laughs> Uh, uh, was I irreverent? I, I, you a know. little bit, yeah. You and Albert used to do that. They're always irreverent. Hey, you know this. This the uh, reason uh, that it's it, that it struck all of us this way is this was the f- first major attack, not by a homegrown uh, terrorist. You know, I mean, we've had the. Uh, they tried to the yelling, building. Like well, they Pearl tried Harbor. to get in in like three. Pearl Harbor. Yeah. They 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 put a truck, truck. in the uh, in the uh, basement, and uh, they blew that up. That was and ninety three. That was yeah. 93. They have an obsess. They did have an obsessive thing about that building, mm-hmm. about yeah. those buildings actually. But that built one of the buildings in particular. Well, they wanted to hit the financial district. I think they really wanted. Well, to I think to them they wanted to expose vulnerability. Well, to them, I mean, I could to them there. the World Trade Center represented. Uh, uh, Western imperialism of some sort, you know. Alex, when did they build the trades? Do you anybody remember the years the trade set that went up? 71, 72. Yeah. That's when we put the carpet oh, in. What's that early? Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and then when did, Fol- when did Philippe... 71, I was putting in carpet. When did Philippe Petit uh, tightrope across it? I don't know. Yeah, that movie oh, was I watched great that. about that. But, anybody, you know, they oh, were building the Trade Center and putting yeah. on floors as we were installing. So, uh, you know, we were we were working our way up, and uh, not all the floors had been completed. Did you ever uh, eat up windows on the world, Alex? I always wondered if you ever ate up there. No. Because it overlooks the whole all the five boroughs. I watched the documentary when the lights went out. They said when they were eating up there, they said you saw each, like, each region of the city go out quick. Queens, Brooklyn. I always wondered how it was. Well, that was during a bl- blackout. You mean. The blackout, yeah. They had that. They showed windows on the world. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I was in New York for the '65 blackout. Charlene has her hand up. You know, um, you know that fully petite movie was excellent because uh, Phil's talking about like the way they were constructing. It showed you like uh, in the fully petite movie how they had no security back then. He got up there with the you know the guys and they strung that wire and everything and they were for for like weeks and stuff they would go up there and you know hang out with the workmen and put helmets on and act like they were workmen everybody saw that movie what was nobody it asked them for a union card i got yeah. thrown off that yeah. job once because i didn't have my card and i was in the elevator you and, well. and, and, and a guy carded a, a union rep carded me i didn't have my card with me and uh i i had to leave they tossed them out. well he got away with it he was good for Luke petite and they went up stuff. there and they uh, got away with it. They strung the wire and everything, and he, it was amazing how he got away with that. I don't mm. think today, you know, he would get away with that at all, right? I mean, there's so much security. We thank, we have to thank 9/11 for that. All this extra heavy security, <coughs> not just guns going off in schools, but 9/11 too, right? Yeah. Well, I tell you, when I heard the helicopter went in. I thought my mother was hearing things because she called me on my phone. I was like, holy shit. I thought a 9-11 right away. I said, oh, God. Hey, did you hear what Cuomo said? He no. said, all New Yorkers have PTSD. <laughs> when they hear that any kind of aircraft has slammed into any kind of building in Manhattan, they think it's a terrorist attack. I de Blasio being, said it was the Republicans. I remember <laughs> being in the subway I right after 9-11. Yeah. That, uh, wasn't it like a, a Dominican airline went down in Queens or something? And well, you we got you got yeah, you got to hand. We it, thought it was terrorism. You got to hand like. it to this guy the other day. By the way, I'm helicopter feeling, I'm, guy. I'm feeling lightheaded again tonight. What is oh, this? Man. Maybe I'm just bored of doing this. I don't. Know. Anyway, uh, because I've been feeling great all day, and then I come in here and it's hot as hell, and I turn on Could the air. Could be the heat, like you say. Maybe I was trying to drink some water. Where's the air conditioner? Huh? The Six thousand. Where's, the, where's the new air conditioner? I, I didn't buy it yet. Uh, what are you <laughs> waiting for the tariffs? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Uh, when did it break? I didn't. You got to get you up to stand up. Yeah. But, when did it break, Alex? Uh, the air and my chest is hurting uh, because I'm Even sitting because of the way I'm sitting here. Jeez. It's the uh-huh. big one. Huh? It's the big one. It's the big one. It's a, yeah. 
It's agita. I think it is. I, I think it is. I think a lot of this is uh, is is um, uh, anxiety. Um, because I've been feeling pretty good all day today. Uh, you know, so uh, who knows? Anyway, I'm tired now. But it's also it's hot and hot in here, and I'm trying to get. You know. Uh, the, uh, the the air conditioner. You got it on. Air conditioner working. I went and worked out today. You know. Yeah. My heart didn't hurt then. My chest didn't hurt then. It would have from all that. Yeah, you're of... fine. It's probably the heat, the humidity, and stuff. Probably, probably. Anyway, Either that, that or filth. it's all the uh, lead and asbestos in your apartment. That's probably oh, it. Well, Alex, like, I got to go for my drug test tomorrow for the city. Oh, boy. Oh, really? Okay, well, uh, you better stop doing all those drugs you do, Tony. I know. I didn't do anything. Lay it off the aspirin, aspirin Tony. If I take a Bayer, I'll probably run a red flag. Lay off the is, baby aspirin. Is, is that the, the new job head. with your mother, you know, being her caretaker? Yeah, they have to fingerprint me and everything tomorrow. Wow. I miss so that. So I'm actually a city too. worker. I, I'm going to tell the lady, does that mean I can sleep on the job since I'm a city worker? <laughs> that, I got away with because I'm her daughter. I don't have to go through all that. They said that uh, if it was a stranger, they would have to do all that. But because it's my mother in New Jersey, they let me get away with being background checked and all that. Yeah. Well, I mean, they because I think they said it's just protocol for the city. They were telling me and my brother that you know, so he's taking me down to Brooklyn. So. So you two I've, were both doing the same kind of job. Could, yeah, I've been doing my that. Actually, Jersey. has a real job for three one one. He's just uh, already a city worker. So he's just gonna give me the lift to Brooklyn, so he knows where it is. Yeah, and I'm going down and, to get to get my. Thing as well, so I can take care of Tony. So it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need that. I'm in Alex. I, I'd like a sandwich for lunch, please. Not too much maintenance, yeah. and take the crust off. That's what my mother would say. I'm gonna kill this guy. I see Alex. Hey, as long as you're getting paid there. for it, then it won't be bad, right? You know. <laughs> you know, I don't need Alex. I like tomato I soup. Canvas. Uh, I can't believe that you want to do this. I do. Yeah. I swear to God. He wants to get away from boxing fucking hats for exactly. crying out loud, Phil. Phil, I can't. Alex, I can't take it anymore. I can't. I am literally, I'm ready to kiss. I'm, I'm actually, I told Jackie, I'm rehearsing my farewell speech. How do I, I don't want to laugh when I tell him I'm quitting. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm telling you, I'm going to think I'm going to stop laughing. Tell him that you got some terminal disease and you only have three days to live, but you worked as long as you could. Make them feel guilty. No, you feel that you, know you, you feel a desperate no, need. A you feel a desperate need oh, to take care oh. of your mother. That's exactly it. Yeah. She's all excited for me. She's excited for you. Why? Yeah. Uh, last because week, she, you know why? she has the lady we have now, the private lady. She doesn't speak good English. She's nice. Neither do mom, you. I can't take her. But <laughs> you know why? She doesn't make my lunch like you do. I said, "Well, mom, what do you want?" She's not Italian. She doesn't. She doesn't understand. That you know what? It's not the same thing. The nationalities are different. I so gotta do you, tell her, do you have to clock out when you walk your dogs? You know, uh, you can't know be charging the city when you're doing your comics and the other stuff. That well, I gotta, you know what it is? I figure. Uh, uh, but you know what I was going to tell you, Alex? Mm -hmm. I was in work today just walking around, daydreaming as usual. And I saw those stupid hat boxes that I fold. And <laughs> this big delivery in three weeks, I'm hoping I miss it. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. I don't want to say these fucking things anymore. But I mean, I was like, I think I'm afraid when I tell them I'm leaving, I'm going to laugh because I'm so happy. Keep this up, I'm by the way, Tony, because people are, the numbers are going up while you're telling us this absolutely <laughs> boring story. Tony, know, what I'm happens sorry. What happens if you tell them you're leaving and they say, great, don't let the door hit you in the ass? Believe me, they're going to miss me, Phil. Believe me. I'm a good worker when I want to be. I hate Which you. Know never. What? <laughs> Which is never, but but I'll tell you the truth though. I'll be honest, Alex. I'm really looking forward to it because for one reason, I feel kind of that at least I know she'll be in good hands. Oh God, <laughs> that's what not the reason. Can she be in? They're always on your phone tweeting somebody. You want to stop you know, folding those fucking boxes? Oh God, Alex, I can't take it. If I see, it's like a fucking robot. I can't take it anymore. Well, if they I were smart. If you were smart, you'd have them deliver a couple of cases of boxes to your house. You fold them, and then they, you know, Uber them back and you double dip. Mm -hmm. So, 
<laughs> my sister just called him. My sister just called because she's a teacher. So she goes, uh, she may be my timekeeper. They contacted her. She says, I think I'm going to be your timekeeper. I don't know. They're going to explain it to me. So I think when I call into work, I've got to call her. And then she call. I don't know how it's going to work. I said, just do me a favor. Let's just get this done. What is this discussion day. we're having here tonight? <laughs> I tell you, my first week, I told my mother already. You I'm wonder why the city doesn't have any money. Shecky's gonna laugh when I visit him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him, I'm, I'm, I'm not lying about this either because I'm not joking. I told my mother, and I'm strict about it. I want to get her stimulated, so I want to read to her. She's like, oh, I don't want you to read to me. No, we're reading. Because when oh, I yeah. want, I'm gonna read so comics. Well today. You'll no, read she comics. Wants to watch yeah. TV land, Phil. I know every episode of Raymond. I can write the script. What does she watch? She, she watches Gunsmoke when I come home on TV land for lunch. Oh, God. My That's a great show. It is, but Charlie, all day, every day, turn the channel. By the way, can I, I say this? Is to maybe, I'm uh, going to read uh, to you for an hour a day. This may be of interest to you. God, I'm lightheaded tonight. I actually got a book out that I'm going to take from the library for it. I've been fine all day. Okay. It's me, Alex. I think I'm going to get to you. It could be. I don't know. Maybe I got. I, I wouldn't have my vision checked, but maybe it's that I'm working too close to these computers. Uh, uh, maybe the strain the computer. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, um, I'm sorry about that. I have never seen an episode of Gunsmoke. What? She has probably seen every one. I'm telling you, I think she's in the fucking movie TV show. I, I've never seen it. I wow. come home. And I, I have seen maybe it. I've seen maybe five minutes of an episode or a clip of an episode, but I've never seen an entire episode of Gunsmoke. Who, who's in it? Is it uh, Arness? James or, Arness. James Arness. Arness. Okay. Yeah. And who's Miss Kitty or whatever her name is? Amanda Blake. Her. See, I know all this stuff, but I never yeah. watched the show. We yeah. know like, oh, it's on again. He doesn't admit to watching the show. It's like it's good to change the schedule. I said. Yeah, Gunsmoke and Bonanza. Oh, well, yeah, I, I, I used to watch. Yeah, I used to watch. I used. I used to watch. West. No, I used to watch Bonanza. Uh, that I can admit to. Okay. Right. Last well, died a couple of weeks before my father. And you know what she's hooked on to? The Tony Shalhoub show, where he solved uh, all the crimes. My uncle used to like that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, which one is that? Is that in San Francisco, that one? Uh, he, is that the guy? Uh, oh, he's always one? solving crimes. He's I like a eccentric yeah. person. Yeah, it's got, yeah, he's got the guy's name is the title of the show. Yeah. 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 She likes the mystery ones. Mm. I said, oh, Lord. And then and at dinner time, it's Andy Griffith. I like so that. You just show. roll her in front of the TV, and then you go play with your <laughs> I, I watch Andy Griffith with her, because I like to, I It's like funny. They, they refer to that as the golden days of television, and I want to know what's, what's so fucking golden about it. I like that show. Remember, I watched the one when Aunt B got hustled. I I I'm sorry. I, uh -oh. I what, what I, 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 I I didn't I didn't watch. Uh, I never watched. Um, uh, May, uh, what's his name? Andy Griffith. No. Never watched. That you never show. did. I, you I, I, I watched that as a kid. Uh, oh, she watches Matlock too, because that's another mystery thing. Yeah. No. I, 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 I was not big into any of those shows. To tell you the truth. Who is the big fat guy that was a detective? Cannon. 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 Yeah, I used to. Cannon. Cannon. Yeah. Like oh, Phil, you and, and Blue Bloods, we got to watch that on Friday nights. Yeah, Tom I, I, I don't watch that one. Is that with uh, uh, the, the guy who played uh, Hawaii, in Hawaii? Yeah, yeah uh, with Tom the Selleck. Yeah. You Tom know, Selleck. I'm beginning to realize maybe what's wrong with Marjorie. She's just getting old because she does nothing but watch television. She comes home and she puts on a show she can binge watch. Okay. And, and then, you got me doing Lucifer. Jeez, well, thanks. Lucifer was good. My yes, good, but like I can't that. quit watching. You, you See, like it, huh? Good. See, which ones do you watch? You watch? Did you watch it from the very beginning? Well, I watched it when it was on whatever CBS or Fox or whatever it was yeah. on before, and then when it left, I quit watching. But now it's on Netflix, and you told me about that, so I'm watching the whole season four now. Yeah, it's really good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I've been I've been hunting. And around. they just they just uh, they just okayed season five, which will be its final season. Uh, Is Better Call Saul going to come back? Of course. Oh, uh, when? Supposed to, but yeah, that's what I say. When? I like. Uh, I love that. Uh, show. Just figure out when it came on last year, and it'll come on. It's been the same over a year. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. Well, let's see here. 
Better Call Saul. Nah. What's the deal with that show? It's about a lawyer or something like that. Sort of, and and yeah. you know what? And Kaminsky, they they ought to be giving us another season of that. Oh, yeah, yeah they too. they're doing it. They're doing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Better Call Saul season four. But how does it relate to uh, uh, Ben? Uh, it was one of the characters, and they but developed it. it. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was his uh, what's his name's lawyer yeah. in in, in uh, Breaking Bad. But it's like after breaking the death, it's about the And this is like a prequel. This is, a, this is where Saul and, came from. And I, I watched Better Call Saul before I watched Breaking Bad. And Breaking Bad was great, you know. Yeah. But I don't think that one's coming back. What, what's that, what's uh, Breaking Bad? Yeah, that was great. No, they finished know. it. That was through. Yeah, but Better Call Saul is the sequel. Yeah. yeah, there's like certain shows that are like epic things like Breaking Bad was like really 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 good it, by the way oh that. it won't come back till 2020 really yeah jeez huh. yeah uh, what are you waiting delayed. for Trump to get reelected? it's been delayed until 2020 uh, it says driven by talent needs which would not override if it was on the worst show, blah, 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 blah. Quizzed about further about the... Uh, yeah, it's 2020. Wow. So, that, that's uh, a long wait. You know, yeah, that is a long wait. Yeah. yeah. But they're filming, <laughs> supposedly they're filming uh, Kaminsky Method right now. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, is there going to be another Maisel? Oh, yeah. 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 They're, they're filming that right now, too. Yeah. So. What about The Handmaid's Tale? Is that okay? Oh, it's on for its no. third season. I can't. Stand yeah, it. it's, it's it's on now. I let I let girlfriend watch that piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh look! Is there anything else running around uh, that that's worth watching? Um, well, um, my two favorite shows so far this year are Fosse Verdon. And uh, and and Chernobyl. Huh. Yeah, I where some of where are they? Bird. Huh? Where, where what's uh, what network? Chernobyl is on um, is HBO. Oh. And uh, Fosse Verdon is FX. on FX. Okay. I yeah. think that Sam Rockwell was really good. Oh, he was terrific. Uh, and, so uh, is she. Who does uh, Gwen Verdon? She's really good. As Michelle Gwen Williams. Verdon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and she's I, really I, terrific too. Yeah, why? You know, I go to Netflix and there isn't a movie I haven't seen. You know, you you, you flip through. Uh, well, you I, know the you trouble know. the trouble I have with Netflix. You go to Netflix and you say, "What shall I watch?" And it it, it, it is this grid, and yeah. it makes no sense yeah. at all. And I can't find anything. You know, I mean, it, it, I, and, and sometimes like when they did Lucifer. If you went looking for Lucifer, you had to go looking for Lucifer. You couldn't yeah. just find it. Am I right, Charlie? Yeah. Once you start watching it, though, it comes up right away on my my screen now because I've but been watching. But to originally it. find it, it's a bitch, right? Yeah. You got to hunt for it. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I I think net uh, you know uh, Netflix is badly laid out. Yeah, and then you go over to Amazon, and they've got a couple of really good shows. They're Amazon originals, but the rest of the stuff is like old Jerry Lewis shows, and yeah, yeah. A, a, a lot of crap there. Yeah, on Amazon. Yeah, what, what else is out there? I mean, uh, the, you know, I, I've seen everything. That's why I think that maybe I'll pick up HBO for a while and. Uh, get a taste of something new well i watched good omens on uh, on amazon yeah it was marginally okay it wasn't great you know um uh and uh, i'm trying to get through uh, 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 a show on uh, uh where what is it what's the other one damn it i am just i'm so out of it tonight i can't remember yeah. anything it's probably hot uh, it's getting cooler finally. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, 111 uh, here. 111? Yeah, Let's not see. enough. Let's see here. You got HBO, you got uh, the, the Showtime, then you've got the other one. What's the other one? Uh, Stars. 
stars. Uh, has a thing I've been watching uh, called uh, American Gods, which is kind of interesting, you know. But I don't know. I'm just tired of watching television. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I look at I, I I look at something. And I go, oh, this episode's an hour. And I go, I don't know if I have time. You know what I watched? Uh, I, and I told you this last night. I was watching it, and I finished it. I watched all of Cleopatra, the 1950, oh, four-hour, nine-minute movie. What was it, 62, maybe? Elizabeth Taylor, Cleopatra. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Which, in its time, of course, was vilified for being just <laughs> terrible. But I went back and I watched it, and it's not really that terrible, you know. It was okay. Uh, it uh, it uh, you know stood it, the test of time. No, it didn't stand the test of time. That's no, not the best way. It's to not. Put it's it. not relevant. You mean? Huh? It, 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 hi, Kevin. How are you? Uh, hi, Alex. How are you? Um, no, it 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 is a much better film than people said it was when it came out. Yeah. Uh, they really trashed it. it well, it bad. was, I, I, as I noticed it, well-directed. Screenplay was not embarrassing. Who directed it, Alex? Uh, Who directed uh, uh, Mankiewicz, uh, it? Mankiewicz. Joseph Mankiewicz, yeah. Um, uh, it, it was not, it, it was, uh, Elizabeth Taylor was, did a good job. Richard Burton overacted as usual. Um <laughs> Uh, Rex Harrison was wonderful in it. And I watched the whole thing and I went, you know, it wasn't a great film. It wasn't the masterpiece they wanted it to be, but it was okay. And it might have even been better if Mankiewicz had been able to do what he wanted to do with that film, which was release it as two three-hour films, one called Caesar and Cleopatra and one called Antony and Cleopatra. Mm. And then he could have done a six-hour version of this film and gotten all the stuff in he felt was good, but he had to compromise and take stuff out and eventually came out to four hours and four minutes, and that was the roadshow length. And then when they went to, like, the normal movie theaters, uh, it came to... Um, they cut it down to three hours and 15 minutes. In 62, when I used to go to the movies, I think they were 50 cents. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, what, was this, uh, you know, long movie uh, a 50 cent movie? No. Or did they get no. a premium for no, it? No, they got a premium for it. Yeah. In its roadshow engagements, once it got to the smaller theaters, it probably wasn't 50 cents, but I'm sure it was much cheaper. But by the time it got, you know, by the time you got to uh, the smaller theaters, you also got shitty prints. Mm -hmm. Because by then they'd been so hacked up by being shown at, and, you know, cycled, bicycled through yeah. all the theaters <laughs> that by the time you saw it in its uh, local engagement at your local theater, they were hacked up prints, you know. Yeah. I remember those days. You got the streak lines up and down the screen. Uh, well, it was always usually during about the first 30 seconds of each reel. Yeah. You know, and then it cleared up because by then you'd gotten past the part where people had their hands all over it and it got scratched up. But, you know, those prints didn't last that long. People were scraping the silver off so that they no, could no, uh, there wasn't, turn it there in. there wasn't silver in those days, <laughs> Phil. That's way early as silver. Uh, what they did, there's a very interesting film that I have. Uh, what they did is they used to cycle these films around, okay? Uh, and uh, the last place they would wind up is Dawson in Alaska. Oh, wow. And they, when they got them there, they, the company said, don't send them back. We, you know, we don't want to pay the expense of having you send the films back. So when you're through with them, you keep them or do whatever you're going to do with them. So they took them and they built a big ditch and they buried them all. Oh, and recently they found all these films. That sounds like that Star Wars movie they made. Yeah. They buried something with Star Wars like that. They were trying to find it. When did, they, when did they come out with the Kodak Tri-Pack? 
uh, that, that turned all the colors, per, you know, the reds into purple and things no, well, like that, that. that. No, that was that. Was, there were there were two many kinds of color. Yeah, Technicolor never faded. Right. The reason it you never told uh, Becky Sharp. Well, the things, reason it yeah. never faded, the prints would fade, uh-huh. but e- there was uh, each film, uh, Technicolor film, had three negatives. Uh-huh. All of them were in black and white, representing uh-huh. one part of the color spectrum: cyan, magenta, and uh, and uh, what 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 was the I other? I forget. One? The cyan, magenta, and yellow. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, so what ha- would happen is black and white never faded. Mm-hmm. And so when you wanted to make a print again, you would just take the three negatives, put them together. They were called interpositives, and you would make them into a, a beautiful print. That's why Technicolor lasted so long. Why you could take a Technicolor print today and strike it, and it's <coughs> just gorgeous. Okay. The other ones all did it, didn't do interpositive negatives. And so they started to fade, and they would turn yellow, and they would turn blue, you know. Uh, I think it was um, Spielberg who complained that... Uh, Jaws. Uh, Jaws, uh, the, the, the water was green by the time a few years had passed. Yeah, yeah, luckily, yeah you luckily, mentioned something to me about the, the, the blood, uh, you know, the, the yeah, being... Yeah, uh, yeah. It wasn't red anymore. It was purple. Yeah. Yeah, but what happened was... Uh, uh, Spielberg and Lucas especially with Star Wars they, they did uh, for instance Star Wars was done in color by deluxe okay but what he did was he made those black and white interpositive negatives so they could last for a while and, and so that they could reestablish it later on and that's why Star Wars looks so great today you know the other the other reason why a lot of these a uh, lot of these um, uh, 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 pictures look better today now than they did was because uh, with uh, uh, digitizing and so on they can restore the the, the color using d- digitally so yeah. they're able to do that. Let me see here. Where's uh, where's uh, where's Darth Pat? There we go. Here we go. And there's Patrick. Let me put him over there. Okay. There we go. Hi, Patrick. Wow. Yeah. So that's why Star Wars today still looks good. But if, if, if they hadn't done anything to save that picture beforehand, if, if Lucas hadn't done anything to make interpositive negatives, uh, uh, it would be in a lot of trouble today, you know. But they're doing a lot of restoration using digital processing and so on. So even the worst old films look better now than they did. So Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I hadn't seen To Kill a Mockingbird since I was a kid. And when I was that young, I didn't really get it. And I didn't read the book. So, uh, But you say that uh, it's, it's a movie that... You uh, you enjoyed now and oh, you know, yeah. all I these years it, later. I watched it twice this weekend, wow. uh, and and I didn't like it when I saw it the first time because everybody over the years are going, oh, it's the greatest movie ever made. You got to see this picture. Oh, it's great. It's wonderful. Blah 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 blah. And I went, uh, who needs it? You know. So when I finally saw it, I said I had my arms folded and said, okay, show me. And I mm-hmm. didn't see what was good about it. Then I went back and watched it the other night. Having already gone through that experience, and I, after it was over, I said, "This is probably the, one of the greatest films m- ever made. It's yeah. that great a film. Have to watch it. Very good. It's that good a movie." And um, so it really, uh, you know, it really, uh, it was amazing to me how good it was. Oh. Yes, uh, yes, Charlie. Oh, um, you know, thanks for all that. Uh, comparison that you did between the play because now I know I, I would never want to see that play but um, Alex you know uh, oh, the one thing I always remember from reading the novel and from the movie too is that thing uh, ship a robe I never heard of that before I don't that. know what that yeah. is to this day I don't know what a it's like a dresser is. I think oh my mother yeah. has the ship a robe in the yeah. 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 she Alex, has the front wall she always has put my clothes she has a ship robe it's like a tray it opens up like a dresser. But it's Alex, what is that line about? It's old. Is it an armoire? Killing, 
What is that line about never That's killing Congress the mafia? Wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me listen to Charlene. What's your line? What is that line about never killing the mockingbird? What does that have to do with that woman accusing the black man of the rape? And it all has that nothing because... to do with that. It has no. to do with the fact that, it, at least in the movie, he's at the dinner table, and he's talking to the kids, and his son says, why can't I have a gun? And he said, well, I had a gun when I was a kid, but when my father gave me the gun, he said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, if you want to go out and shoot sparrows, because the first thing you're going to want to do with this gun is shoot birds. You can shoot sparrows, but uh, to kill a mockingbird is a sin because they only give pleasure to the world. Uh, that and that's where years. the to kill a mockingbird comes from. And in the play, rather than at the dinner table, he uses it as part of his summation speech in the trial, and it just doesn't work there. No, but it's I like mean, they like, tried to shoehorn the title in. Is there a correlation between that trial that Atticus is, uh, you know, defending that man yeah. and that line about the Mockingbird? Uh, I no, seen that movie it has nothing years. to do with the trial, has, ha, except in the play it does, but in the movie it doesn't. And at the end it resolves itself as well. Uh, because there's a question of whether they should arrest somebody or say that somebody murdered somebody. I, I, I don't want to spoil it for you if you haven't seen the film. And, uh, and yeah. they, it, it, it come, it, it's a recall that you don't kill a mockingbird. You don't kill somebody or something that is Probably worth it. Probably if I watch it again, yeah. I might get it more, but I haven't seen that movie in years. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I walked away saying, why did they do the movie? You know, what was the reason? Uh, the play, rather. You know, because the movie's the definitive statement. I mean, the book I hear is very good, and I haven't read it. But the movie yeah, is, the the book, is the I'm definitive. Well, you said the play was the top grossing. It, was it, uh, did it gross more than Cats? Oh, you know, well, I, oh, that, I think Cats well, ran what, the That's longest. a musical to begin with, and we're uh, talking musicals. We're talking plays. And yes, it has grossed more than any other play in the history of the play. Height. Maybe the height, Alex. Right? Well, also, I mean, tickets today in the old days, if you did a play, it charged, uh, what? $4. $4 to get in to see the play. Now it's like $400 to get in to see this yeah. play. And they shrunk the seats. The, the sweet, no, the <laughs> seats in this theater were decent. They were really, really decent, yeah. Yeah, they just recently redid the theater and they expanded the seating. What theater was it, Alex? It's a Schubert. Anyway. And you know, in the movie, at the very end, that Boo Radley guy Bo, was uh, Boo Radley, the yeah. guy from The Godfather. Um, what's his name? Well, Robert Duvall played Boo Radley right. in the movie. Yeah. That was like his first movie that role. That was his first, like. I think his first movie role. Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, I, as I mentioned last night, I'm watching. Uh, I'm watching. Um, uh, Cleopatra, and who was the first guy to stab Caesar in Cleopatra? Yeah, you oh, mentioned that. Yeah. Carol O'Connor. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting for him to say, "Geez, eat it," you know. <laughs> Stifle it, eat it. <laughs> Stifle it, Caesar. You know, uh, but that that was the uh, uh, he was around for quite a while, Carol O'Connor. Yeah, we think he was overnight success like that, right? But he, he was around for years. But I saw a documentary on the making of Cleopatra and how it took so long and how they kept, you know, stalling things off and how certain actors were on the film for way too long and and so on. And I'm thinking about Carol O'Connor, who probably had a nice uh, nice uh, couple of months, uh, at least a couple of months, if not a couple of years in Italy, where they film the thing at Cinecetta Studios, um, and and all those people who have you know, there was uh, Hume Cronin who was a great actor, uh, mm -hmm. said that he uh, uh, never. Uh, uh, wait, what, what was I saying? Where was I? Uh, that? that he had a lot of work in Italy. And, uh, uh, oh uh, yeah, yeah. That he that he was there for like a year in Italy. And by the time the film came out, he's barely in it. <laughs> you know, they uh -oh. somehow cut his part out. 
uh, or a lot of his part. And, and you know, so, I mean, uh, but uh, there's a whole document, two-hour documentary I watched on the making of that <laughs> film. That's why I went back and watched it. Where is that, Alex, the documentary? Uh, it's very hard to find. Very oh, hard okay. to find. I could tell you where to find it, but then I'd have to lead you to illegal sources. Oh, uh, boy. Uh, uh, but if he it, tells you, he'd have to kill you. No, but, I mean, it talks about all the trials and tribulations this movie went through to get made, not the least of which was her having to have a tracheotomy. Mm. Because... Uh, what was uh, the deal with that? Uh, she had... Um, she had pneumonia, and the only way they could save her life was by giving her a tracheotomy because she couldn't. Yeah, breathe. she almost died about three or four times. Yeah. Her back. And, and in the film, you can, you can see the scar. Uh, you know, was was she pretty, heavy then, or uh, oh, was she still beautiful? Oh no, she was a. Uh, you're gonna hire a woman to play Cleopatra as a fat pig. No, Come was, on, <laughs> Phil. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, she's always had problems no, with weight. No, no, he was at, thinking at, of when she got heavy. And yeah. Joan at that point, at that point, at that point, yeah. she was maybe the most beautiful woman in the world. Oh yeah, I mean, she was yeah. gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. she was Even when she gorgeous. was heavy, she was gorgeous. Though. You know, somebody said, um, uh, 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 "What is it?" Uh, some, somebody once said about Marilyn Monroe. Um, well, if she didn't have all that blonde, if she if she had if she suddenly went bald, what would she be? And somebody said, the sexiest bald woman in the world. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, I mean. Do you think her sexiness was due to how she was portrayed in the movies? Or, you know, you know because, you know, when you look at the movies, like Some Like It Hot. Phil, and, and the, oh, oh, Marilyn Monroe. I never found Marilyn Monroe sexy. I never no. found her sexy. No, I, but. The only time I she found was portrayed her sexy. Is sexy. At the end, she made a film called The Misfits, and I found her very yeah. sexy there because she was very vulnerable in that film. I didn't mm -hmm. like the blonde bombshell thing. I always found that kind of cheesy. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I once stayed at the Hotel Del Coronado for a week, and that's uh, where they filmed uh, a Marilyn Monroe movie. I, it's been so many years, I don't remember which movie it was. But, yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was uh, it was interesting. Let's see. I here. like We're... Niagara. That's my favorite. She was the artichoke queen. Yeah. There we go. There we Down go. Down at Castroville. Hello, mm. Alan. Are you there? I am. But we can't. I, we, don't, know. I don't know where your camera is pointed. Mm. But it, it, it's, 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 it's certainly strange. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Did you I improvise a stand for the uh, for the camera for the phone. The, oh, I see. But do, do people do people here find Marilyn Monroe sexy, or am I wrong? Oh, I found her sexy. Really? <clears throat> oh yeah. What period of her life? Because see, I found her sexy later on when she became a little more vulnerable, a little more natural, you know, uh, a, a little less of a caricature, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was only 13 when she died, so, I mean, well, <laughs> it had to be later in her career. Yeah. Now, now <laughs> on the other hand, uh, uh, Elizabeth Taylor was, you know, so uh, when you're... Oh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, when she oh, did yeah. slip, yeah. she's, like, really sexy, right? Yeah, cool. yeah. Cool. Uh, but, Some Like It Hot was the one they did at the Hotel Del yeah. uh, in San Diego yeah. or Coronado. But, uh, anyway. When I first met my wife, she did. She dressed up as Marilyn Monroe, and she looked damn close. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? So I, I wouldn't say she's hot. So. My, my, <laughs> my second wife, Susan. My bias. My second wife, third wife, Susan, uh, looked a lot like Elizabeth Taylor. She had that. Yeah, it was the eyes. Yeah, she had the Elizabeth Taylor-esque look to her. Yeah. And she put on weight, so, you know, whatever. Yeah. Hmm. But, uh, um, you know, I mean, it, 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 these things happen to, to actresses. You know, there was an actress. Yeah, they get a little soft egg, right? Well, there was an actress by the name of Ginger Rogers who didn't know how to, how to grow old gracefully. And she kept making herself up and making herself up. What, what, what's your problem, Allie? You're, you're, you're like got something covering. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got a Tony filter. 
<laughs> no, no, no. That's, <laughs> no, it's not the Tony filter effect. <laughs> it's, oh, it's the fickle finger? Yeah. I think it's the black electrical tape failed. Uh. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyway, so I, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Elizabeth Taylor was more my type. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was this, when she passed away, Mal Moreau, was that, that had to be like an ultra shock, right? Was that like, like what happened? What, did anybody see it coming or no? no. Al, excuse me, Al's adjusting his camera. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, uh, don't look down at that part of the screen, folks, or you're getting nauseous from all the movement. You know, or if Al's you, if a banjo you're... player? Hmm? Oh. Yeah, there's a banjo back there. <laughs> I am. <laughs> are, you, are you really a banjo player? Yeah, but I'm pretty bad these days. I don't practice a lot anymore. You know, we <laughs> haven't heard... Ray well, Renati who, who, does the guitar, and now we got yeah. Al can do the banjo. <laughs> we haven't heard from all night is, uh, is uh, uh, J Josh. He's been very quiet this evening. Uh, but that that's that's Candy Clark, isn't it? That's pretty close, yeah, that, isn't it? That's, I think that's, that's Candy Clark. That's not Marilyn yeah. Monroe. No. Uh, that's pretty close. Can, can, Candy Clark yeah. was in that uh, 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 American movie. American Graffiti. The American Graffiti. Oh, like and she appears with uh, my friend John D'Agostino at these oh. car shows. That's my wife. Oh, really? She That's your like wife? Is it really? Let's see that again, I'm man. Tell you. She did the Marilyn Monroe thing with the dimple and all that stuff on it. Yeah, how long ago was that? Uh, oh, she was in the movie. 95? Yeah. Oh, boy. Can we make that bigger? Hot <laughs> <laughs> <Not> stuff, Kevin. <laughs> okay, now look. This happens to be a fellow member of the Citizen panel. Let's not jerk off to his ex, his his wife. That would not be right. He said ex. Don't do that. I'll come through for you. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Oh man. Uh, I, that was a that was like a. She used to drive a Miata. Uh -huh. And that was a Miata car club, and it was a dress up thing. And I was a bodyguard, and she was Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, oh, very nice. So it's one of those masquerade party things. The Miatas were that I sucked up to when she for I first met her. The Miatas were kind of fun cars, weren't they? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, this is Candy Clark. Isn't there a resemblance? Really? Yeah, yeah that's close, huh? Is she from Urban Graffiti? Yeah. 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 That was a good movie. She could have pulled that one off. Yeah. Well, you know where. Uh, where where American Graffiti was filmed? Was that in uh, Modesto and San Rafael? Modesto. No, nope, never. Oh no, Modesto. Petaluma. That's right, Petaluma and San Rafael. Yeah, as a matter of fact, they just had a reunion up there. Terry McGovern was up there, and he was doing a, a lives thing for what was it, a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it, Phil? Um, I didn't I didn't notice because they had all the cars up there and a bunch of people showed up up there and they had a big parade. Yeah, and all but that here, stuff. here's the story. It was an anniversary. Here's I think. the story. Yeah. They started filming it in San Rafael on Fourth Street in San Rafael, and then the city of San Rafael decided we don't want you shooting your movie here, and they quickly yeah. had to find a place to do yeah, it. And ended up Petaluma, and they yeah. wound up in Petaluma, and that's well, why to this day, Modesto. that's why to this day. Um, uh, uh, George Lucas hates San Rafael. <laughs> yeah, but he moved to he moved to Terra Linda, you know, with uh, his ranch. He didn't move. Yeah, to but he was way on the he outskirts. He moved to Terra That wasn't Linda, even San Rafael. Phil. Really. Isn't that Terra Linda? No. No. It's, out the, it's up above the, Nevada. No, he he no. he went out to Lucas Valley Road. Yeah. Well, Lucas Valley Nevada. Road is is is, is Terra not Terra Linda. <laughs> No, no, not that part of Lucas Valley Road is you don't go north. Uh, like no, you go into no, the, no, no, to Occidental no, or something. Believe me, I know. I've been to Skywalker Ranch on several occasions. I know they're still looking for the silverware. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's it's in the middle of that road of, and it was Lucas Valley Road, by the way, before <laughs> Lucas ever moved out there. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I used to drive up there. Yeah, uh, I used to go up there on motorcycle. You know. Yeah. But um, they, um, yeah. 
So that, that's, that's, but anyway, he, uh, they had to go to San Rafael to finish it. And uh, I think right. they only did their it Main stuff. Street looks similar to 4th Street. That's right. Yeah. 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 And uh, it didn't matter. It was all shot at night, so you could just use a small town's yeah. main yeah. drag. Uh, and uh, they did do the, uh, the, the shots of the, uh, of the drive-in were done in Modesto. Yeah, that wasn't done in uh, in San Francisco at no. Mel's Drive-In no. on Van Ness. No, 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 no it's out in the that, valley. That wasn't Mel's. No, I thought it was Mel's Drive-In, which was on Van Ness. There were and, Mel's uh, Drive-In. Yeah, it even had a Phil, sign that said There were Mel's TV. Drive-Ins all over California. Yeah. Now there are. No, but there were then. And the one they used was, I believe, in Modesto. If it wasn't, yes. it was Fresno or Stockton. It was but, Modesto. It was oh, Modesto. So it was just that Mel's Drive-In had everyone had a plaque that said uh, "Home of American Graffiti." Yep. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, they yeah, do now. No, Mel's no, that was no. Yeah. It, it never. It the one in San Francisco never said "Home of American Graffiti," but they had a lot of pictures of American Graffiti in there. Yeah, they claimed it in all yeah. their stores. Oh, I see. Yeah, but there was there was more, was more than one Mel's. Yeah. Yeah. The chain, yeah. Boy, fighting with you about this is almost as bad as fighting with you about Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just I don't give a shit hey, about this. <laughs> by the well, my my wife and daughter are going to Capitol Hill tomorrow. Anything you want me to send a message or anything? Yeah, say hi to Gavin. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Anything else? <laughs> where, where, where are they going? They're going to Capitol Hill tomorrow. For what? That's their last day on their D.C. trip. Oh, I oh, see. That Capitol. Not yeah, Sacramento. they've been they've been out there most of the week going on the you know the eighth grade DC trip. Oh wow! Nice. They've been pounding their ass. Yeah. Wow. Seven in the morning till eight, nine, ten at night. Wow! Yeah, they uh, they go in to uh, see a Congress in action. They're going to tomorrow. Yeah. Well, uh, that's kind of hard to see. Well, yeah, they don't <laughs> go into Congress. I think they're going into the Library in Congress. Yeah, there isn't much going on, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, but let I me check. tell them what to do if the, they see that helicopter. Yeah. Let me oh. check. <laughs> let me check in with Josh here for a second. Are you there, Josh? I'm here. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I, I had a thing for Josh too. I sat in grand jury duty all day today too. Oh, okay. oh boy, it's a secret. That was that was exciting. Oh. What kind of case? Oh. It was grand jury. We'll get around to you eventually, Josh. Well, <laughs> okay. So they they uh, didn't then Kevin live in California? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So they do eighth grade trips to DCA from all the way out there? Yeah. Oh really? Oh really? It costs yeah. twenty five hundred bucks a head, but uh, do do they fly then? Yeah. They had to fly, right? No, they don't do car washes and stuff like that to pay Yeah, for? they try and do fundraisers and stuff like that, but it costs twenty five hundred bucks a head. That's why I'm sitting here and there out there. That that that's a pretty big thing. You know, like where I live, but you can drive to D.C. from where I live in, you know, maybe like seven hours. I live right. well, south of Columbus, Ohio, so I can be on I-70, which will basically take you there in 15 minutes. So God, I didn't know they did that from all the way out there. Wow. Yeah, it's hey, a big deal. A big deal. This one, uh, two teachers go every year. That's a, they've gone like 12 years in a row. Right, right. Yeah. Well, that's good, interesting. Good experience for it. When we went to Gettysburg, uh, sometimes not. I don't know if yours does, but we went in March, and some schools are on break then, and some of them, I think, the mostly the probably the ones that drive. If that's on their like route, they stop there maybe on the way there or the way yeah, they back. Were, they were there all day yesterday. Okay, Gettysburg, yeah, and the guy mentioned that uh, he gets kids from Hawaii every year, and I was like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, how does that work? You know, but. Okay. Well, yeah. it, it, you know, it's it's a, it's a um, well, let's see here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Is school still in? Yeah, school's still in session, isn't it? I don't think so. They're well, they're slowly getting out. There's some that are still getting out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so do they yeah. do this during the school year? Or do no, they she do... was out on the eighth. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, I meant to they ask left. Josh. Uh, right away. When you're done talking about this, uh, 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 you know, they had a tornado or something in uh, Ohio a couple of weeks ago, 
and I was wondering if it affected him at all or uh, if it was near. You know, you're, you're terrible this way. Uh, I have a helicopter fall on a building that's <laughs> like four miles away, and you yeah. go, are you safe? You know? Well, you know, uh, the Kevin, 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 Kevin on wrote on me. I didn't you, ask if you were safe. Yeah, I Kevin, said, could you see it? But Kevin, Kevin wrote me about it. A little closer was my friend Walter Sabo, who sent me an item in the newspaper about some cop beating up another cop one block away from me. That's a little closer. <laughs> Did you see it? No. Oh. But there was a video. Yeah, we, we were we were actually in the path of that. Yeah. Uh, the cell that made the tornado. So yeah. the sirens went off here, you know, like pretty much all night, uh, you know, it seemed like. They were on from like maybe like 11 p.m. to probably like 1 in the morning till it was all over. And it touched down. It was maybe about 10 miles away. So... Yeah. I know some people at work and stuff like that that got some damage and no, nothing like major, but like I know some people, you know, work that lost like a tree or, you know, like some of the roof on the side of their barn or whatever. Because uh, a lot of them live, it was in a pretty rural area. So, uh, you know, but yeah, the sirens went off here, you know, for quite a while, probably a couple hours. So, yeah, I'm it was glad you didn't have any damage. And then, the, but there was a pretty big one out in Dayton, you know, which isn't, you know, real far from here. That was the worst one. That was the one that had the fatality and, you know, a lot of damage. The one in uh, uh, around where I live, uh, it did shut one of the freeways down just a couple miles south of my house, though, because it kind of went right through there and it snapped off like, it was amazing. I saw the pictures, like 15 or 20 telephone poles right in a row. I mean, every single one of them. Was broke and they, you know, so they were laying across the road. So it took them like two days to clean it up. It was a real mess, to be honest with you, because it was the it's the major thoroughfare that everyone takes from the rural area to get to the city, you know, Columbus. So yeah, it was yeah. pretty bad. Well, how bad bad Phil was about this helicopter was. He <laughs> asked me about it. Uh, asked if you could see it. Yeah, if if I could see it while I was going to the play, which was two days before the helicopter crashed. <laughs> Well, you were be you were just preparing, you know. You you got there early for a better seat. I I got to tell you, the uh, uh, the guy, I have to hand it to the guy. I mean, he chose to crash on top of that building rather than have it crash on, on the street the, on the street and kill people. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so. and he had to pick a building without antennas and all that other shit on top of it. Yeah, yeah and he well, had to pick a building. I would have suggested he go over a couple of blocks. Yeah, the one with the gold on it. Yeah, the one with the gold on it. <laughs> it's very well, easy the, to the see. Reports, it's, it's very easy to see, and uh, who's going to uh, miss the, it? The reports you know. that I heard said that it was on Seventh Avenue, but you said it was on Fifth. And I don't know what reports you heard, but it wasn't anywhere near Seventh Avenue. Well, Fifth, Seventh. I mean, it's two blocks over. It's, it's, uh, have you ever? I did hear they were. Do you back. remember how far the av how long the avenues are in New York City? <laughs> Depends if you're driving or walking. Well, <laughs> you know, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the the space between. Um, uh, let me see here. How can I put it? Uh, it's about two times longer than a street in New York City. Maybe two and a half times longer. Huh. An avenue, so to go Not, from seventh and then you go over to sixth, and then you but you Broadway is in the is in there too. In the middle, right? Yeah, and, and then there's uh, sixth, and then there's fifth, and right after fifth is Yorktown. I'm lazy enough that I would not walk from seventh to fifth, to fifth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you make Marjorie do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess they're back to wanting to try to maybe ban helicopter traffic again in Manhattan. It, 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 he was in a in in a zone that he wasn't supposed to be in. Uh, he he yeah. was in a, a restricted flight path area or flight area because I guess because of Trump Tower. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me let me let me tell you though this and this is uh, this is something you should know. I learned something. You learn something every day, right? And I, when I was a kid, I, I studied space, and I was very much into space. I mean, I could name all the planets in order, and, you know. 
tell you their relative sizes and so on and so forth. And, and somehow this eluded me, but I didn't realize that the moon is part of Mars. Did Trump say that? You bet your life he did. <laughs> Yeah, but at least he it's wrote, not Uranus. He wrote a tweet saying we shouldn't go to the moon, we should go to Mars, which is part of the moon. Well, it's got moons. Right? That's, that's what this moron said, Phil. <laughs> well, Elon Musk wants to go to the moon. He uh, doesn't Mars. even know it's a satellite. Mars is a planet. Yeah. No, oh. Sirius is a satellite. And he's going to build a space army. Woo! Uh, Space yeah, yeah, his space force. I want to see that happen. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. They got lightsabers. <laughs> yeah. Right, in fact, in fact, uh, uh, every week, uh, uh, what's his name? John Oliver. John Oliver on his show. Just before he comes on, they run a slide of like something, and it says something. It's and and we always try to figure out every week what it's going to be. Like what happened this week that it could be. You know, it's Mother's Day. Could it be a thing to Mother's Day? Whatever. Is this similar? To last the thing week. That he... Last week it was a picture of Mars, <laughs> with the inscription above it, Luna. <laughs> <laughs> Now, can you explain that kind of idiocy on the part of Trump uh, uh, since you're his, apolog I, I, I his did, official I apologist? I didn't, hear, I didn't hear that being taken out of context, so uh, <laughs> I have no idea. I, I didn't know he said it. That was a guess on my Trump, part. Blank Trump. Mars tweet. Here we go. You got the tweet? Uh, here we go. Um, let's see here. Kind of hard to take a tweet out of context. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Not if it's Trump's. He can. Let's see. Let's see here. Trump's bizarre moon tweet. Here we go. Uh, do they have a picture of it? No, they don't. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here's what he wrote. Are you ready, Phil? For all the money we're spending, NASA should not be talking about going to the moon. We did that 50 years ago. They should be focused on the much bigger things we are doing, including Mars, of which the moon is a part. Well, maybe they're going to use the moon as a jump off to... to it's uh, like you a know. piece of cheese that broke no, off. Yeah, that's it, it. Including Mars, of which the moon is part. Uh, yeah, and... What, what did he tweet after that or before? Uh, uh, no, that's the whole thing. He that's finished whole, off He finished off defense and after, science exclamation after, mark. After that, he said he didn't say it. Well, he didn't. He tweeted it. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. How, do you, how, how do you excuse that, Phil, that ignorance? Oh, I, I don't understand... The full uh, I'm realm of what he was talking you, about. I'm reading you the full thing, Phil. I, I understand, but the the thing is, I am not fake news. I'm things, not paraphrasing it. I read it to you. Look, when you tweet things, sometimes they don't get understood. The well, way then you maybe mean you it. shouldn't fucking tweet, you <laughs> twat. <laughs> well, maybe you shouldn't read it. Yes, uh, Patrick. I was just going to say to Phil, it's a lot like a kid trying to explain something. Yeah. That's what his tweets are. And as Alex said, maybe he shouldn't tweet sometimes because if you're not going to have a cohesive thought that you can put to paper or, you know, a, a device and people cannot understand it for what you mean, don't do it. Well, I mean, I understood it. it. It's part of Kofefi. 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 Yeah. Rather than answer the question, Phil, you make a joke. Of course. How, what else can you do? Well, with something because like you that? don't have an answer. Why don't you just say I, I Trump is a stupid fuck originally. who doesn't know science, and he should keep his mouth quiet about it. Well, you know, I I don't know why he was saying what he said. And, and I'm sure he had a very good reason. Oh, I'm he sure know he why did. He's saying what he said. <laughs> because he thought that was the case. Oh, well, 
maybe it is. He did have a good reason. It's called sundowning. You know, he knows where <laughs> Area 51 is. And, you know, uh, he knows, uh, you know, all these secrets. You know, who's buried in Grant's tomb. You know, <laughs> so, not great. You know, uh, as long as he's, you know, putting out all of this transparency, uh, I wonder if he'll tell us the secrets that uh, only presidents get to know. Oh. Or maybe there aren't any. They're probably not telling him. Oh, boy. Well, all I, all I know is he, he, he's a bad example to kids about <laughs> science, you know. Well, they shouldn't be reading his tweets. Yeah? He he, like they're, meant, they're meant for Democrats. You know, this idea of tweeting is getting r rather ridiculous because to tweet and then deny you ever tweeted what you tweeted... Yeah, you know, uh, it's the uh, Russians. They hijacked this account. They hack a tweet that's already tweeted. They can't do that. Good answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the Russians. Oh no, it's fake news. It's misquoting. Yeah, yeah. I just misquoted the tweet by reading the tweet. Yeah. Well, did you read it in the uh, original Russian or? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or did you use Google Translation? All I know is it just says here. Well, that's why it got screwed up. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. For all the money we're spending, NASA should not be talking about going to the moon. All the money we're spending, NASA is almost underfunded. We've been we've been yeah. hitching we've been hitching rides through the Russians to get there to get to you the know, space station. Uh, uh, who, who is it that's going to put together a ride uh, in the to the space station for fifty-eight million dollars a passenger? Uh, uh, is that Amazon? I think it's Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if you get a deal if you got Prime. Wait a minute. I think it's the United <laughs> States. Actually, I think it's NASA <laughs> that's planning on doing that. No, no, no. It's a private thing. Uh, no. The the fifty-eight million dollar. Uh, no. I. Th yeah. It was. Uh, who was it? Uh, Al, you seem to be nodding. Yeah, I think um, somebody paid the Russians to go up uh, to the no, state. No, that place. was before. No, no, this is that something before. that's gonna... This is an oh, offer being okay. made, and I think it's being made by NASA, believe it or not. Uh, but you, Jeff, would, but you would have... Jeff Bezos has a, a, a new startup okay. that's going to take space tourism, right. and he's also going to kind of be like a working partner... We're not really a partner with, but do some of the also do some of the things with that SpaceX does too. So that's the like when we went to Kennedy Space ticket. Center. When we went to Kennedy Space Center just last July, so less than a year ago, and you take the tour, they'll show you the new Amazon. Well, not Amazon. Jeff Bezos' new facility uh, that's right across from the Welcome Center. There, uh, it's a huge building, and I can't remember the name of his company. Uh, it's I don't know. They, they do fulfillment uh, package fulfillment there. Blue something. As well. I can't remember. And then, you know, they show you the the launch pads that they're renting right now, or leasing right now, some of which, you know, had historic flights that went off of them, or uh, missions, I guess you should say. But, uh, uh, and then, you know, they also show you all the SpaceX stuff, too. Plus the, what is going to be the new shuttle missions, which I think the shuttle comes back next uh, year, if I remember. Really? 2020, I think. They're almost ready to bring that new shuttle out. Uh, they show you the new launch pad and the new rover for the new shuttle and all that. So yeah, it's 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 Amazon, not really Amazon, well, but it's Jeff Bezos. I, I, oh, I, I think they should uh, fifty-eight take... million. What uh, per passenger? Fifty-eight yeah. million. Well, yeah. his his uh, ex-wife can afford to go. Yeah. yeah. I know. I'm <laughs> probably have to pay full fare right? You know? Well, they're <laughs> also they're also uh, they're offering this up to companies, for instance, who want to go up there and make films. Make movies, okay. make commercials, whatever. So when you start factoring that in, it's not as you know prohibitive. Well, you know, these things are in 50 years are probably going to be commonplace. You know, uh, right now we look at it in an amazement, but uh, you know, th there's going to come a day when this is going to be commonplace. I don't look at it in amazement. I mean, uh, what had what did NASA become in the end? Just NASA shipping and hauling. Is what it well, really that, became. that was because Obama defunded it. No, it wasn't because Obama defunded it, you moron. <laughs> well, okay, you asswipe. Uh, he, he, st he stopped giving him money. Well, you, you started defunding it long before Obama. <laughs> Keep 
Republican. You douche anima. Obama closed NASA down. What? Obama was the one that shut, no. uh, you know, basically shut NASA down, said we didn't need it. No. I thought George Bush did that. Yeah. yeah no. I, I, think you're, I think you're right, Al. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, I mean, uh, they, figured, the they figured they could get the rides to the space station with the Russians, you know, yeah. and uh, that we didn't need it. And I thought it was well, very stupid. Uh, and it wasn't. There's, it there's, wasn't actually, there's actually pretty good evidence, though, that a lot of that money that no longer went to NASA instead went to the DOD because, you know, I know it sounds like a West Wing episode, but. The New York Times reported, what, five, maybe six years ago, that the Department of Defense does have a shuttle that can go to space that they claim is unmanned, but the report is unclear whether or not it's an unmanned shuttle or can carry human cargo. But they do say that it could go, for instance, to the space station and rescue astronauts to bring them back, and that the DOD has had this shuttle for the last, I mean, they've probably had it now for about 10 years. So about the time they started to, quote, defund NASA, yeah. they actually ramped up space flight operations at the Department of Defense. And now that the program has been quasi declassified because it's been, you know, reported in the New York Times, yeah. uh, they even show you on your tour, actually, this building over here now belongs to the Department of Defense. You'll notice the fencing and the armed guards and the et cetera, the et cetera. Uh, we really can't tell you what goes on in there. If you would like to read the May 5th, 2009 New York Times, you may get some information, but that's all we can tell you, you know, right now. So that could be what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think they shut them down because they gave us Tang. Has anybody ever had Tang? Oh, I just, oh yeah. Thank you all. <laughs> really? <laughs> The yeah, astronauts used to drink that. I, I, as someone who has always loved the space program, I always was disgusted by the Tang jokes. Really? I really was. Yeah, I think it minimized what NASA was doing and what the space programming was attempting to do and boiled it down to the fact that this company created Tang so they'd have orange juice in space. Yeah. That's orange juice. <laughs> It's an orange substitute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, you orange know. Covered, it's a little colored sweet. water with sugar. It's, it's, like you, like punch it's, it's like telling me that you who is like chocolate milk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. it's, it's a form of chocolate beverage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I told you, I talked to the guy who invented you who. Yeah. And I was at a uh, I was at a luncheon with he and Yogi Berra, who was the <laughs> spokesman for you who, as you may remember, Tony. Yeah. And um, uh, he said, you know, you can bury this thing in the Sahara Desert for a hundred years, and then mm -hmm. dig it up, and it will be as fresh as the day you buried it. And I looked at him and I said, what's in this fucking shit? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put it right next to a Twinkie. Huh? Yeah. 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 Twinkie, yeah. Good. We just lost. Uh, Dude, we, we, are you still there, Charlene? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we haven't got your picture. Yeah, no picture though. What happened? All we have. You know, that. you have nine. You, you're doing pretty good tonight. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> we have nine, but we haven't got a full house. No, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. That's why I called it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. Hey, listen. I think I'll play the theme here. Uh, right. that time. Anyway, well, I made it through the show. I'm feeling, still feeling lightheaded tonight. I don't know what. We'll have it some is. tang. All day I was feeling <laughs> great. Anyway, you, hey, I want to thank uh, Phil, and I want to thank Charlie, and I want to thank Josh, and I want to thank Charlene, and I want to thank Tony, and I want to thank Kevin, I want to thank Patrick, I want to thank uh, Al, and I want to thank me. Uh, listen, all of you, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I will wave back at you, okay? Here we go. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel, minus, of course, Charlene, uh, who isn't in the picture. Anyway, that's it for tonight, uh, uh, and uh, let me get rid of everybody here and get rid of Skype so that the next show can use it, okay? And uh, that's it for me. Uh, and I will be back again if I can muster it up 
tomorrow night. Stay tuned now for the intersection with Jack Bishop. He's next over most of the same gab net. And uh, then tomorrow night at 9.30, it's Damien Chaplin and The Exchange. And then back here tomorrow night, 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.